So let's look into the next type of machine learning, which is basically unsupervised machine learning. Now, what happens in unsupervised machine learning? Now, in unsupervised machine learning, as the name suggests, you don't supervise the learning process itself. For example, this can be when you have a data set, which you also don't know, what is the structure of it? In supervised learning, we know exactly what was the previous inputs and what it resulted into. And based out of that knowledge, we use our machine to understand and take the future decision. Now, in unsupervised machine learning, we don't know exactly what is the structure of the data, then how we can judge that what input or parameter will be resulting into some of the action and what are those actions which might be or what are the parameter itself which might be interest to us. For example, if we are going into Amazon and we are trying to buy or we are looking into just one book, how Amazon can suggest me some of the books or some of the other products which might be interest to me when I'm browsing one particular product because it can be that one book which I'm currently seeing there is of comedy and I need one more comedy books or maybe comics or it can be a psychological heavy reading book and I need to see some of the movies which may be suggested in my other product list. Now you can take experience of how people actually bought but when you are freshly starting, how will you work? Initially, Amazon used to work with clustering algorithms to figure that out when you don't have much of the sales volume data with you. Now, in this scenario, IMDb is one of the best example. When a new movie comes in, how IMDb understands which category it belongs or which group it belongs. So it uses the clustering algorithm to figure out what category it belongs. And basically, if a user is looking that particular movie, then all the similar category movies will be displayed as well. So unsupervised learning in nutshell will be utilized when you don't know much about the structure of the data. You take some of the parameter like in the movie case, I can take what genre it belongs. It belongs to horror genre, comedy genre, or it belongs to classic genre and then I can also take into account who was the producer who was the actor what is the length of the movie what is the production house so these are all the parameters which might be given to me or which I don't have and based on that I will categorize all the movie into multi-dimension and cluster them together into groups and these groups will be something which I will be using to take some of the important business decisions as well because all the product in this group are similar in some case. So that is unsupervised learning. Now the next category which is reinforcement learning. Now as the name suggests itself, it's more related to psychology. Now psychology is one of my favorite subjects and if you remember there is a famous Pavlov dog experiment which we all read when we read psychology. What happened in this Pavlov dog experiment is there was a dog and it was conditioned in such a way that whenever the master rings the bell, the dog salivates which is the dog start feeling hungry. So it was conditioned in such a way that whenever the bell was ringing, the food was given to the dog and this was carried out for quite a while and after some time whenever the bell used to ring the dog start to feel hungry this was conditioned into the dog and this is also a example of reinforcement learning in practical what we are going to do here is we are going to trigger our agent which is the person who is learning with a positive reinforcement if the agent does a good job and negative reinforcement if the agent does a bad job. For example, you're playing chess and you want your program 
to understand how to play chess. You would be giving a positive reinforcement to the program if everything is good and you are going to give a negative reinforcement to the program if it loses the game. So in this scenario, when you start the chess game, the machine doesn't know anything. There are a zillion way how your chess player might navigate the matrix, the chess matrix. And in the scenario of the chess, how the machine will be able to take decision because if it tries to calculate those zillion probability, it will probably halt. It will not be able to compute the probability of winning or losing. It will not be able to take the next step. So the best is to help the machine learn with the past experience of positive and negative reinforcement. Now in this scenario, if I take a step and if I don't lose, that's a positive reinforcement. If I take a step and something goes negative, if my player is cut or if my king is getting a check, then that is a negative reinforcement if I'm trying to program the chess. So in this scenario, the machine automatically understands what are the good steps to take and automatically understand what are the not good steps to take. And it learns all the steps and next time and every time it tries to play, it always keep those previous experiences in mind and that's how the machine gets smart. In the real world as well, when you see the rat maze, you have a rat maze and in this rat maze, if you look into this entire rat maze, the rat will try to read to the cheese which is in the center and it will probably try everything. It will go in the, this corner, then it will not find anything and then come back, then go in this corner, not find anything, then come back and slowly, 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 it will reach to the cheese. Now this is reinforcement learning. Reinforcement learning is basically motivated from the psychology and it provides our agent which is actually the machine learning model which we are going to use in our real world to do some of the productive activity as well is learn from the positive reinforcement and negative reinforcement. So you can also try this in your home with your friends or your family members. If you want to make certain kind of behavior come out and stick with them, always reward them with some of the goodies or gifts. If you see that happening, it can be a small chocolate as well and give them punishment if you see some of the behavior which you want to suppress in them. This is embedded in our psychology and the same fundamental has been put into machine as well. So in this entire section, what we saw, we saw supervised learning, what it is and different types of supervised learning. Then we look into unsupervised learning, what it is and given an example of IMDB an amazing clustering of the product. And then we saw the reinforcement learning and understood a simple example of how we train our agent with reinforcement learning. So these are three broad categories of machine learning. In the next section, we will be understanding about what are the types of problem which you can solve with machine learning algorithm. So stay tuned and let's catch up in the next section to understand more about machine learning.